We were wrong. We were really, really wrong about shiny hunting in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Let's break it down. Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I'm pretty guys a brand new video today, and today we are diving into the world of shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, many of you may have first stumbled across this channel from my shiny hunts, and I have over 700 shinies over my career here in Pokemon shiny hunting on YouTube and Twitch and beyond. And Sword and Shield was somewhat of a disappointment as we were kind of locked into the raid dens and ultimately through DLCs, the raid den adventures. And there wasn't really a lot of shiny hunting mechanics because this battle method, this KO method that a lot of people were trying to utilize in the game was seemingly broken and it didn't actually work. And that was what we were told from data miners, from our own kind of personal anecdotes and experience. But ultimately, it turns out that that's not the case, and we just misinterpreted the data, and someone has actually done a tremendous amount of research to correct that. So I'm gonna give you guys that rundown today. In this video, we're gonna discuss it, and what this means for the Pokemon Shiny Hansen community in a game that is just simply two years old. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button down below, and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, as we will have plenty of Shiny Hunting ahead of us in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And before I go any further, I gotta tell you guys, we have a new merch drop available right now at TeamShiny.com. We're repping the spooky shirts. We've got a really cool discount code. If your card has over $70 of t-shirts in it, you can get 15% off with code SPOOKY. So make sure you guys pick up these amazing designs and look sweet for Halloween and beyond. These ones are great, like honestly, some of our best. But check out some of the other shirts we have there. This works on all of our shirts, and it's just great stuff. So. Deck your, uh, deck your closet out for the holiday, of course, and, and we'll have some fun there. But let's shift gears and let's talk about this. Uh, Anubis or Sabuna underscore Switch on Twitter did some incredible work here and we're gonna break it all down. Let's dive in. So just to give you guys the backstory, again, we knew that there was this KO method in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where if you knocked out a Pokemon 500 times, you would essentially increase your shiny rate of that Pokemon, but it only worked 3% of the time. So that was what we thought, right? Only 3% of your encounters had a boosted shiny rate, making it so that your chance of actually finding shiny was significantly low, and it really didn't make it make sense. The hatching eggs was simply the better approach, but it turns out we misinterpreted that data. The data miners misinterpreted it, I misinterpreted it, every shiny hunter in the community misinterpreted, and here we are two years later, and it's finally challenged, and it seems as though we have some proper insight as to how this all works. So again, big props to Anubis. I'll put their Twitter in the description below. They deserve all the kudos in the world here, but we're gonna break down this thread and discuss it and kind of explain what's changed, not in the game, but in our perspective here. And I'm gonna take a moment here on, on behalf of myself and my community. I mean, I can't really speak for other people, but I apologize because I was someone who was very outspoken about this and how disappointed I was that the mechanic was broken and never fixed. And ultimately it was simply us who didn't understand it. So I'll take the L on this one. But uh, it makes me sad that we just went two years of this game and didn't really get to do the method because no one really knew how it worked, which I guess is, uh, it's kind of weird. You would <laughs> you would have thought they would have heard us and uh, made, a, made a comment about it. But again, it is what it is. So, anywho, the, the last two, three months, this person, Anubis, has done some crazy research here, right? So in July, they noticed having only one KO in the Pokedex gave statistically lower brilliant rate than having 500 KOs. One KO equals a 97 out of 62, one six brilliant chance, about a 1% chance. But if you knock out 500 Pokemon, you get about a 3% chance at a brilliant. Now, for those who don't know what a brilliant is, a brilliant is the Pokemon that spawns the yellow aura around it. That's what a brilliant spawn is. And I remember from day one, you can actually go back and I might actually dig up the clip. You can go back to my bug playthrough and I was running into brilliant snomes up near Sir Chester trying to find a shiny because I was convinced that the brilliant auras had to tie into shiny chance. Why would they add this mechanic to the game and not have it tie into shiny chance? And then we concluded that it was broken. It didn't actually work. But again, we were misunderstood. So again, 500 KOs of the same species of Pokemon increases the brilliant aura rate of that particular species. That we already knew. But then Pokemon put out this table, and Anubis actually does a really good job of comparing it. They put out this table that explains the more you battle this particular species of Pokemon, the more brilliant auras appear. So once you hit 100 of that species, the likelihood of a brilliant aura is essentially maxed out. But you can go up to 500 of that species, and your shiny likelihood is also increased up to six times. I think it ends up being five times, but six times the likelihood of appearing for a shiny. But again, we thought that was every single spawn of that. So if I knock out 500 Scythers, I would have a six times chance or basically like a one in 400 chance of getting a shiny Scyther. But it turns out that's not the case. It was simply that the brilliant auras 
of that species had the boosted shoddy odds but because the odds are so low to find brilliance in the first place it was something that no one really took the time to research we just wrote it off as this mechanic is broken a three percent chance of every scyther i encounter to have boosted odds doesn't make sense but in the context of a three percent chance to find a brilliant pokemon of that species and if you find the brilliant pokemon that has the shiny higher shiny odds even so with all this said it's kind of crazy because you think to yourself okay i have a three percent chance to find a boosted you know uh, uh a brilliant or a scyther after i knock out 500 and then i only have a one in 500 chance let's say to actually get that scyther to be shiny it's still pretty mind-blowing but it certainly changes your perspective on how this method actually was coded so again they compare anubis compares the data mine information from kafotix who's a data miner who originally posted out these different uh these different kind of uh tables and information and things like that and they ultimately matched up that the brilliant rate increasing match up to the data mine numbers for the extra rerolls increases suspicion so this kind of uh kind of triggered an idea in their head that maybe something was off here so they started diving into chain fishing right and for those who don't know chain fishing is in this game but it's kind of weird in the sense that you get a chain fish going and you can break the chain in various ways but ultimately it increases the rate of getting a brilliant aura pokemon which we now know those brilliant aura pokemon have a higher chance of being shiny right so again very interesting stuff right so the the, the post goes on to detail that fishing chain uh produces various data the chaining exists but the dex ko doesn't give require consecutive ko's um then they go on to say that going through trees and grass encounters static encounters doesn't make any difference right because you have to have the brilliant auras so again a lot of this is kind of their summaries and their thoughts on everything um but there was a critical piece of information that was left out and I'll, I'll recap this here i found that they leave out one very critical piece of information chain fishing increases the brilliant rate but when a brilliant pokemon spawns the chain is reset so that's interesting to note so you have to do this chain so fishing is probably not the most effective way and that's actually one of their conclusions here when they go through all their data and kind of break it all down that when you look at this table for how many encounters they did with fishing they said they spent less than three percent of the time enjoying the best brilliant shiny rates because of chain resetting the shiny rate wasn't much better than running without chains so fishing really not the play here they also go on to say that i got another twenty-five thousand by forcing the fishing chain length so i had 10k in each interval the pool data shows the brilliant rates matching up to kurt's table of extra rerolls the expected brilliant shiny rate is one in 455 and the expected non-brilliant shiny rate is one in 1366. they then go on to say that at 500 knockouts three percent are brilliant for that species each brilliant gets up to nine rerolls. so you can have the base roll two with shiny charm six for 500 ko's and ultimately you get to one in 455. at 100 ko's you'll still see the three percent brilliant chance but you only get six re-rolls which is a 1683 chance so let me recap that because that's probably the most important summary of this whole thing if you knock out a hundred scythers and in your decks it says you knocked out a hundred scythers you get the highest chance of a brilliant spawn which is a three percent chance that scyther spawns with a brilliant aura that scyther then has a one in 683 chance to be shiny with the shiny charm now if you knock out 500 scythers you still have the same brilliant chance three percent but now you have the extra chance of a shiny which is one in 455 if you encounter a brilliant aura scyther that is the summary that is the conclusion of this research so it is no longer the thought that you had a three percent chance of getting a boosted shiny pokemon of any pokemon of that species but rather it is just the brilliant aura pokemon that received that buff that big boost to that one in 455. so i can tell you what i want to do is i want to go in my game right now i want to pick a pokemon that i have 500 knockouts on and i just want to only bash into brilliant aura pokemon 500 times and see if i get a shiny but even so that's still a pretty significant amount of effort considering it's only a three percent spawn of that pokemon anubis does a conclusion here they said go after brilliance if you like shinies avoid brilliance if you're a full odds hunter consider 100 dex ko instead of 500 if you want to ko at all for time efficiency and don't chain fish they also go on to sort all their data and kind of source it so you can look at their spreadsheet on everything they covered but this is some pretty crazy stuff here we are two years later and we have some new insight into shiny hunting in pokemon sword and shield so i'm not sure how this makes you guys feel but as someone who spent countless hours hundreds and hundreds probably thousands of hours playing pokemon sword and shield and shiny hunting every single day 
it's a little crazy that here we are when my sword and shield is collecting dust on the shelf we find out the true mechanic to the shiny hunting method it just goes to show you man sometimes things aren't what they first uh they seem at first glance and it took a lot of research from this person to really get down to it so hopefully we get to a, a little bit more straightforward method of bdsp with maybe the pokey radar or something else maybe some underground mechanics but let me know if you guys had any success since this data's come out let me know what your thoughts are to this change into your perspectives i i'm kind of like i said sword and shield's kind of on the shelf for me right now but i'm excited to dive into bdsp but maybe i'll dust it off and just try this out one time it's pretty crazy stuff man it really is and again i'll own it man i was wrong the whole community was wrong but i was definitely wrong and there were many times where i was so frustrated that they didn't make a shiny hunting method with the brilliant aura where it turns out it was there all along we just didn't realize it that's gonna be it for me guys feel free to check out my new shirt drop use code spooky to get 15 percent off a cart with 70 bucks or more on t-shirts and that's gonna be that guys like the video subscribe if you guys are new and i'll see you guys on the next one peace